Mr. Kinzinger, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you both for being here. Uh, specifically on USAID, I want to say you guys, I don't think you guys get enough credit. And just generally with State Department, you guys don't get enough credit. Because when you uh, alleviate a conflict, obviously you don't know that it's been alleviated until we have, when it's unsuccessful. So I, I want to thank you and your folks for all the good work. And, and, you know, specifically, I think it's important to try to make sure we're spending taxpayer resources effectively and efficiently in, in a targeted way. I think we shouldn't cut those resources simply to cut them. We should make sure they're efficient. Uh, but I also, you know, it's important to make sure when we do that, we are following the president's priorities, even if we disagree. And, uh, and that's, you know, where we come in, into play, especially in an area like this. But I especially want to commend, obviously, the people who took out uh, al-Baghdadi this weekend. Uh, it was a great thing. Uh, it's not the end of the war on ISIS. This is a generational fight. This is going to go on for a long time. And I think we have to accept and understand that. That's where you guys come in extremely uh, importantly as well, making sure that that next generation uh, is not radicalized and that not only are they not radicalized, that they actually push back against radicalization. Um, but, you know, the more leaders we kill, the dumber they get. It's like in Iraq when we did that during the surge. You just you take them out and you accelerate the number you're taking out and uh, and pretty soon they run out of people to lead and, and it capitulates. So I wanted, obviously I've expressed a lot of concerns generally with serious policy, but I, 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 I'll leave those uh, for now. But I do want to turn to the regime who I think the corruption was key to Baghdadi's caliphate and there's a whole lot on the inception of ISIS and what, what uh, Bashar al-Assad did. But I think now it seems all but certain that Assad will consolidate much control over the country. Uh, Mr. Harvey, you mentioned about you know uh, uh, rebuilding and USAID projects within Assad-controlled territory. I want to echo what my colleague Mr. Wilson said. Uh, we do not want taxpayer dollars going to prop up Assad, and uh, so uh, you can add me to that list. And I know you guys are with me on that too. So, uh, but as the uh, founder of the Syria Caucus, I'm going to continue to urge my colleagues. Uh, to hold those responsible for war crimes in Syria accountable. So, Mr. Shanker, if President Trump were to sign, I, I think he's said he's willing to do it. We have one Senate holdout. Uh, but if he signs into law the Syrian, the Caesar Syria Civilian Protection Act of 2019, what kind of an impact would that have on the Assad regime and their supporters? Uh, thank you. I, and I share with you the... Um the pleasure at the, the, the killing of Baghdadi. Um, this was... Uh, it's worth celebrating, for sure. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great thing, but it, there is no knockout blow. Um, listen, I, I think that it's important that we recognize what Assad has done. Um, we are, are spending money and funding projects to document um, the, the mass atrocities um, we are working on record keeping um, and underwriting some of that. Um, this is a regime that is beyond the pale. Um, and uh, we are focused narrowly on, remain to focus narrowly on three things in Syria, you know, preventing the resurgence of ISIS. Um, we are, um, we are uh, working on preventing, you know, Iranian influence in the country and rolling that back and also a political future through the implementation of 2254. And this is the issue about Caesar. Um, this is a regime um, that cannot be allowed to persist as is. The, the people have to have a say in the direction of their country. The refugees were not ancillary to this conflict. Assad uh, ethnically cleansed his country of Sunni Muslims. He wanted to get rid of them. Um, so the Caesar Act, I think, is, is very important in that regard and holding to account. And I think another point on that is, look, it's going to be out of those refugee camps that Assad created. Where do you get radicalization? Because people are hopeless, uneducated in many cases, you know, and it's easy to blame whoever. And, and that's where you find radicalization. So countering that's going to be important. And can you also address, you know, with Putin obviously standing up the Assad regime, how are you guys working to uh, counter their malign influence in the region? Uh, the Iranians are, are playing, I'm sorry, the, the Syrians are, <clears throat> the Russians are playing a, a pernicious role across the region. It's not just in, in Syria, um, it's in Libya and, and, and elsewhere. Um, uh, we're, we're working on a, a number of, of strategies. We're trying to contain them um, by working with our allies. We're certainly um, ha hammering our allies with 
um, with warnings about, about CATSA sanctions and, and others. Um, but also le letting them know, I think having a frank dialogue about what, Ira what Russia does when they're, they're on the ground. Um, yeah, and I, and I think, and I'm out of time and I appreciate your service, but I think it's important to, it's a lesson when they, you know, basically showed up in Syria in 2012 or 2013. It's a lesson because we see them in Venezuela and we'll see them elsewhere. Stop them early, prevent them from coming in. Thank you both for your service, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.